for coming to our Lenten Recollection, which is also the 31st in our series of Lunch and Learn activities. The topic for today's recollection is the Holy Eucharist in the heart of the Filipino family. This talk is very timely as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are very privileged to have with us our speaker who can share with us his wisdom on how to best honor this holy season. Our guest speaker is the Auxiliary Bishop of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila. He was ordained a priest of the Salesians of St. John Bosco by Jaime Sin on December 8, 1982. On May 4, 2006, Pope Benedict XVI appointed him Auxiliary Bishop of Manila and titular Bishop of Sitifis. He was consecrated Bishop on August 19, 2006 by Gaudencio Rosales, Cardinal of Manila. Co-consecrators were Fernando Filoni, Papal Nuncio to the Philippines, and Pedro Aligo, Vicar Apostolate of Palau. Let us welcome our guest speaker, Bishop Broderick Pavilio. Thank you for the invitation to be with you during this uh, lunch time for this kind of recollection. And uh, the first time that I'm here for this recollection and I see that the venue is uh, so apt for this, I could have brought my PowerPoint to alam po pa na. <laughs> anyway, is it all right if I also inject uh, Filipino words? Yes. You all understand Filipino? Okay, see me. I may not be so faithful to what is uh, presented as the topic, no, but I try to uh, join together family, Eucharist, and mercy. And I'd like to speak for about 45 minutes so that we can have some time for question and answer. No? This year, 2016, has been a uh, part of the program of the CBCP in preparation for 2021, which is our 500th anniversary for the coming of the faith in our country. So we had a nine year, we have a nine year program. And uh, this year is supposed to be the year of the family. After having celebrated the year of faith, the year of the poor, the year of the lady, now we are the year of the family. But then, uh, we, because we had the International Eucharistic Congress in Cebu in January, also in 2016, so it's been also declared as the year of the Eucharist. And uh, Pope Francis has declared this year, 2016, as extraordinary jubilee of mercy. That's why we include also the year of mercy. That's why we have three uh, celebrations, three topics to celebrate and to reflect about during this uh, year. Extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy. Why extraordinary? Because the ordinary Jubilee of Mercy is done every two, uh, an ordinary Jubilee is done every 25 years. The last uh, ordinary Jubilee that we had was uh, at the year 2000, the turn of the millennium. So the next one will be 2025. But we are only 2016, kaya naging extraordinary, out of the ordinary. At bakit nanawagan si Pope Francis ng extraordinary jubilee? Because of our times. Our times is uh, very much characterized by uh, individualism. Napakalakas ang individualism. That uh, people are thinking only, what is there for me? Ano bang para sa akin? Kaya, because of this, even the family suffer. Kanya-kanya ang laka ng isa. And this individualism is promoted by also our gadgets. Ngayon, may kanya-kanyang cellphone na tayo. May kanya-kanya tayong uh, computer. And uh, we don't need to be with the others anymore. Noon, at least, sama-sama pa tayo na noon na TV. And, hindi mo na kailangan yan. and uh, also, this is also promoted by uh, our own um, lifestyle that is characterized by secularism. 
the secular values, you don't need others, basta lang okay ka sa iyong sarili. And this culture of individualism is also resulted or is also the effect of the culture of competition. And in the culture of competition, it starts even in the schools and we found in families and found in our jobs. So, pagalingan. Kaya kapag ikay magaling, ikaw yung nag-graduate, ikaw yung nag-promote, ikaw yung may honors. Okay lang yan and we need that in order to bring about the excellence. But there's also the downside of it that many are left out. Many are left out. Yung hindi magaling. Na-iiwanan. And this is connected with what the Pope is calling the culture of indifference. Globalization of indifference. We are indifferent to those people who are left out. Ang nabibigyan ng pansin yung magagaling, yung magaganda, yung mga matatalino, yung mga may kaya, yung mga nananalo. Yung iba, left out kasi sila and become indifferent to them, to their own situation. And the worst uh, part of our times is the culture of violence. The violence that is even felt in the families, in the safest part of our life. Dapat nandun tayo na safe tayo in the womb of our parents. Nandun yung violence na abortion. And people are even denying uh, that this uh, uh, is a person inside the womb of the mother. Violence also in the homes. Alam natin na mga nangyayari mga abuses in the homes. Nandiyan yung verbal abuse, nandiyan yung sexual abuse na nangyayari sa mga tahanan natin. No, violence also in our own communities. Yung problema natin sa drugs. People don't feel safe anymore. And much worse is the violence of war. And we have a new kind of war now being declared, not, not being declared, but it is the reality that uh, those who suffer most are the civilians, are the women, are the children, are the aged. Hindi lang that they suffer as a consequence, but they are being targeted. Sila yung pinatarget na mga pandigma. So this is the our culture. And the Pope sees that a solution to this is we have to bring back again that idea of mercy. Mercy, that uh, first and foremost, we are recipients of mercy. We are here not because we are good, not because we deserve it, but because God has mercy on us. And sana we become convinced about that. It is not my work. It is God's work that I am alive that I have intelligence, that I am able to work, that I am healthy. So recognizing the, the mercy of God, that uh, although undeserved, and especially during this Holy Week, pinapakita sa atin yan, that uh, we were yet sinners, and yet God, Christ, died for us already. Uh, so accepting this mercy, we become grateful. And when we are grateful, then we value what we have. And not only value what we have, we share what we have. Because this has been given to us, not only for us, but also for others. And uh, experiencing and accepting the mercy of God, we are asked to be merciful. That's why the theme in the logo, the year of mercy, is merciful as the Father. Our, the, the standard of mercy is not only our goodwill, but as the Father. That's why Jesus says, uh, pray for those who persecute you. Love those who hate you. Lend to those who cannot pay. Because that is your Father. He sends His rain to the good and the bad alike. He sends His sunshine to those who recognize Him and those who don't recognize Him. So, in yung standard ng ating mercy because we have received mercy. So, we can be merciful. Anyway, let's start with the family no, as our program in the Philippines no, for this year. 
the importance of the family. We all recognize the importance of the family. Kasi yan po ang fugad ng buhay, yan po ang fugad ng pag-ibig. So that's where we receive life, and that's where we receive love. And for us, we don't separate life from love. Because life is a result of love. Kaya tayo nagkaroon ng buhay din sa pagmamahal ng ating parents or each other. Kaya yung problema ng ating panahon ngayon, they want to have love without life. At yan yung contra-sentimentality. No, I just want to express my love. I want even to enjoy love, but without life. Pero sa atin, hindi pwede pagkiwala mo talaga ang tunay na pag-ibig yan, magbunga yan. At nagbubunga yan, hindi lang na pag-ibig, kulit ang buhay. And uh, this life is uh, protected and grows and is nourished by love. Kaya sa pamilya, hindi lang tayo binigyan ng buhay, na alagaan ang buhay. And naalagaan ang buhay not because of the material things that we have. Ang concern ay hindi lang na mapakain tayo, na mamadabitan tayo, na tayo maging malusog. But yet, hindi tayo nararamdaman ang pag-ibig. And we know of many people who are okay physically, okay materially, but not okay emotionally. Psychologically, they are unprepared to meet life because they were not nourished in love. Kaya insecure. At dahil dito, hindi ni sila marunong magmahal. So, to, to nourish life does not only mean to nourish it physically, but also emotionally, psychologically. And this can only be done if there is love in the family. This cannot be created artificially because love is imbibed by osmosis. Nakita ang pagmamahal ng mga magulang, ng mga kapatid, at yan ay napapasok sa kanya yung damdami ng pagmamahal. Hindi mo na kailangan sadyain yan. Yan ay nararamdaman. And uh, also in the family, Life is promoted not only physically, not only emotionally, psychologically, but also intellectually. At hindi na problema ng ating panahon ngayon. The intellectual nourishment of life has been relegated to the schools. Basta mapaaral sa maayos na paaralan. Na walang guidance na ng mga magulang. At hindi na inaalam ng mga magulang ano ba ang nangyayari sa mga schools. Ano ba ang itinuturo? No? So, but the first teacher of uh, us all are the parents. At na may atmosphere na sila'y makapag-aral, hindi lang sa eskwelahan. In many of our homes, the children have no atmosphere of learning. So, kasi hindi naman at least um, inaalagaan, tinatanong ng mga magulang, nag-aaral ka ba? Hindi binibigyan ng space. And uh, if you are not careful how electronic gadgets would not help in the intellectual formation of people. But there is still one lacuna that is not being addressed, and that is life of the spirit. Also, the spiritual life is to be nourished in the family. At marami hindi napapansin yan. You know, ang iba, Basta lang pinaaral sa Catholic school, bahala na Catholic school sa kanila. But not only that, because as all of us experiences, every one of us experiences, ang unang pagkakilala natin sa Diyos ay galing sa family. Ang unang nag-introduce sa atin sa Diyos ay ang lola, ang nanay, ang kapatid, ang tatay. We learn to pray in the family. We learn to forgive in the family. We learn to accept providence in the family. So let us not relegate this aspect of nourishment of life, spiritual life, in the family. And not only when we were children, but it continues. 
In fact, anong tinuturo sa school o sa kukuha sa simbahan, hindi masusustain na wala sa family. Kaya ngayon na year the family will ask to come together to celebrate our faith in the family. Are there family celebrations of the faith? O, nasabay-sabay tayo ng doon. I grew up uh, away from our province, no, taga-Negros kami, but somehow my parents migrated to Bicol, doon nagtrabaho yung tatay ko. But when we were children, I still remember very clearly, November 1, wala na kaming cemetery yung pupuntahan, wala kaming patay sa Bicol. But then, my mother would gather us magtitirik ng kandila doon sa altar namin. At ipagdadasal, siya yung magbabanggit ng mga pangalan ng mga kamaghanak namin na matay na. At sa kind of a family celebration that I still remember, or the family prayers that we do together, or the going to the Mass together, again, we were, somehow this was a, a, a very good situation that uh, our home is far away from the church. May isang sasakyan lang kami. Kaya yung tatay ko na hindi naman pala simba, nagpipilita na magsimba sa linggo. Kasi siya yung mag-drive sa ama. As a family to the church. And I still remember how we would uh, wake up together, go to the church, and coming back, uh, we, we we've been speaking about the homily, na nanarinig namin, exchanges, that, that small car brings us to the, uh, uh, brought us together, coming anim sa pamilya. No, because of that, but those family celebrations of the faith ay mahalaga sa atin. Lalong-lalo na ang Eucharist. Yes, the Eucharist nourishes us. Nourishes us individually. We receive communion. We receive the Lord Jesus into our hearts. But also that the, uh, the Eucharist nourishes us as a community. We don't go to Mass alone. Now, whenever we go to Mass, we come in touch with the community. Hindi pa ganyan din yung pagkain? Kapag tayo ay kumakain, hindi lang naman yung kanin sa kaulang mga kinakain natin ng mga laga. No, ang mas mahalaga yung sama-sama ng pagkain. Kaya iba yung lasa ng pagkain na isa ka lang kumakain kaysa may kausap ka, kaysa may katabi tayo. Kaya mahalaga yung family meals. And unfortunately, because of uh, the demands of uh, the lifestyle of our days, how many families are able still to come together and eat meals together? Masyadong busy na sa amin sa probinsya, Breakfast, sama-sama pa kami. Lunch, makakabalik pa kami sa bahay. Para mag-lunch to get it. Ganun din sa gabi. Pero sa ngayon, hindi na. O kahit ang isang breakfast, kanya-kanya na, tamo. Mahanggang pa. Lunch, we don't come together for lunch. No? That's a school, that's a office na mag-lunch. I don't know if we have still time to come together for dinner. Kaya pati yung pagkain, fast foods. No? At ang isang uh, masama pa, minsan lang tayo kumain ng sama-sama na may katabi, may television pa, nakaharap. No? How many dining rooms and TVs in front of them? Kaya habang kumakain, mas nanonood ng TV kaysa natin ipag-usap. So, nawala yung community aspect of nourishment. But in the mass, we have both of them. We have the individual aspect of nourishment, everybody receives communion, and the community aspect of nourishment, we do that together. So we go to Mass together, we sing together, we pray together. Yet po yung mahalaga sa Eucharist. That's why we say, as uh, the Eucharist makes the Church, the Church makes the Eucharist. The Eucharist makes the Church. Because by receiving communion, we form church. And the church makes the Eucharist. Because it, it is our being church together that we receive communion. That we celebrate the Eucharist. So, magkadugtong yun. During the International Eucharistic Congress in Cebu uh, last January, 
there were many talks. And uh, most of these talks would uh, center on these four important aspects of the Eucharist. The Eucharist as meal. And it's really meal because Jesus said, my, my, my blood is real drink. My body is real food. The Eucharist as presence. It is the presence of God, continuous presence. And not only continuous, but real presence. Continuous presence that is present not only during the Mass, but even afterwards. Nandun sa tabernacle. We can always access Him, go to Him. And real presence, real not in the sense as a uh, contrast between real and not real. Totoo, hindi totoo. Kasi totoo rin ang presence niya sa Bible. Totoo rin ang presence niya sa poor. Totoo rin ang presence niya sa community. But real in a sense of matter. Material presence. Now, materially, no, He is there. Physically, He is there. Na hindi natin makikita sa Bible. No. At hindi natin makikita sa poor ang materiality ay poor. Pero dito, ang body, is the body of Christ is not the bread. And then the Eucharist a sacrifice. And it became full because Jesus sacrificed Himself for us. And uh, this uh, aspect of sacrifice will be focused during this Holy Week. Especially Holy Thursday and Good Friday. When Jesus gave Himself that we may share of Him. Sacrifice means commitment. That's how committed God is for us. And hopefully, we will also be committed to Him. And lastly, the Eucharist as thanksgiving. And uh, Jesus uh, took the bread, thanked the Father, and in the Eucharist, we recognize the greatness of God's gift, and we celebrate it. That's why it's called Eucharist. It's called thanksgiving. So yung apat na aspect na ito, mini stress sa International Eucharistic Congress, Eucharist as meal, as presence, as sacrifice, and as thanksgiving. And hopefully this should also be how we receive it as a family. When uh, first sana gawin natin, little by little, to come to the Eucharist as family. Kung hindi natin magawa ngayon, kasi malaki na yung mga anak, ayaw ng tatay, at least kung sino lang ang makuha natin. Makuha mo yung pamangkin. Makuha mo yung uh, anak, yung apo. Isang marami sa Eucharist. Ang concern ko palagi, every year, ang dami natin pinag First Communion. First Communion, that's uh, kapag sila ay grade 3, grade 4, no, not yung First Communion. Pero, Kapag linggo-linggo naman sa Misa, ilan yung mga grade 3, grade 4, grade 5 na nagsisiba? Itong mga bata nito, which is 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, will not come to Mass alone. They will come to Mass if their parents or somebody and the elders bring them to church. Pero sino yung dinadala natin sa simbahan? Yung 1-year-old, 2-year-old, 3-year-old, di ba kinakagalan? Pero itong mga 7, 8, 9, 10, bihira ako nakakita ng nagsisimba at nagkukuhin nyo. So let's work on this. Hindi nyo na anak, pamangkin nyo, apun nyo, at least as a family. And uh, we receive the Eucharist as food together. We eat together. We don't only eat at our common table during our meals. But also there in the church, we receive communion together. Napakaganda makita na ang nanay ko nagkukumunyon din. Ang anak ko nagkukumunyon. Sabay-sabay kami nagkukumunyon. And this will gather us no, not only as church in the parish but also as church in the home. Because we receive communion together. We always hear that uh, uh, the family is the domestic church. But there is no church without Eucharist. Hindi magiging domestic church ang family na hindi tayo mag-receive ng communion. 
as a family. And then, the Eucharist as presence. Magandang tingnan din ang mag-ama, mag-ina, visiting the Blessed Sacrament. And praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament. So, yung mga bata, nararamdaman na nila ang halaga ng Blessed Sacrament as a family. And again, we can do that during this Holy Week. Yung ating um, pagtatanod sa Panginoon during Holy Thursday. We can bring along the children, the young ones, no, to pray together in front of the Blessed Sacrament. That can also be done by our Visita Iglesia. No, we Visita Iglesia. So, yan, ay, precisely, we do that as family, as a pilgrimage also as a family. So, to recognize the presence of God, the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And the Eucharist as sacrifice. It's better to say the Eucharist as commitment. That it becomes our commitment as a family to come together to church. I remember when I was young, there was a struggle to go to church together. Siyempre kami mga bata, ang hirap uwisin ang aga, no? may hirap pabilisin sa mga pagbibigis. There was a struggle. But little by little, we got into the habit. Now, kahit na wala yung mga magulang, kami na nagsisiba. Uh, so, it becomes a commitment. At yung unang commitment natin, no, to yung araw ng linggo, which is the day of the Lord. So, we give the first, uh, the most important slot of the schedule of that Sunday to the Eucharist. And then, the Eucharist as Thanksgiving that we are able to recognize the giftedness of so many things. Not the entitlement. Yan yung problema ng ating world of individualism. Now, we, there is a sense of entitlement. I deserve this. I have a right to it. But nawala yung sense of giftedness. And the Eucharist promotes that. That all of these are gifts. And if they are gifts, then we have to be grateful. Then we have to take care of the gifts. If it is entitlement, akin to eh. Wala kang pakailang kung ano mo gamitin. Akin to eh. No, but it is a gift. Mag-aalagaan natin. Bigay sa akin ito. And if there is a sense of giftedness, then there is a sort of sense of contentment. And happiness. We become happy because we are contented. Ito yung isa sa sinabi ni Pope Francis sa Laudato Si. No, part of the spirituality of um, ecology is the spirituality of thanksgiving for the world, that the world is a gift to us. The water, the sea, no, the forests, no, the mountains, they are gifts to us that we to take care of. Ngayon, hindi nakikita ng mga tao yan. Nakikita ngayon as resources to be exploited. And then we destroy the world. So that sense of gratitude. And that sense of gratitude is already planted in the family. Kaya isa sa mga sinabi ng Santo Papa, may tatlong salita na dapat hindi mawala sa family. Una, I am sorry. It's good that in a family, people can recognize ang kanilang pag-ukulang. And that's only, not only for children, but also for adults to say to the children, I'm sorry. Nakalimutan ko yung bako mo. Uh, also for the father to say, I'm sorry, nalate ako. Second word is, um, please, Nakikiusap. Palihog. No, it's not just commanding, but nakikiusap. Please set the table. Please clean your room. And the third word is thank you. Salamat. Recognize no, the good that's being done even by the children. 
And the children ay papasalamat sa bako na ibinibigay ng nanay. Salamat po. Hindi na entitled sila sa bako na yun. So that sense of gratitude can already be promoted in the family. Noon ang pasalamat tayo palagi. Again, in Laudato Si, kahit nasa ganong insigli ka lang sa Tupapa, one thing that he wanted to say is the family prayer of grace before the meals na ma-promote natin ulit. Na nagdadasal tayo ba kumain, recognizing the giftedness of that food that's with you to us. Recognizing also that there are also other people who work for this food. Uh, na tayo hindi lang basta kumain. May mga farmers, may mga katutubo, may mga manufacturers, deliverers, cooks na naghanda niya. Also, that idea of gratitude is recognizing that life is a gift from God. Even if we eat this food, health is given to us by God, not by this food. And also, another sense of uh, the prayer before this is together we thank the Lord. This togetherness. Kaya kaya na simple practice lang kung dapat ating walain. So we learn to be grateful in the family and that gratitude is given expression in the Eucharist as we celebrate together. But connecting also the family with mercy, it is in the family that also we are able to develop this attitude of compassion, of mercy towards the others. The, the Pope stressed two things, the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy. Of these two, ang spiritual works of mercy we can do in the family so readily. Baka corporal, hindi naman masyado, hindi naman masyado, hindi naman butong yung mga anak natin, hindi naman nabukuhay yung mga anak natin. No, but uh, in the spiritual works of mercy, we can exercise it in the family. Like counseling doubtful. Sometimes the parents are doubting, the children are doubting, especially the teenagers are doubting. When we counsel them, we are exercising the sweet work of mercy, like instructing the ignorant. When the parents are teaching their children, uh, guiding them in their studies, we are instructing the ignorant, even in the talks in the families about the current events, the events of the faith, instructing the ignorant, comforting the afflicted. When you see the child that is crying, that is troubled, or the parents that are troubled, or the grandfather, the grandmother, who is afflicted, comforting them. Especially here, forgiving the sinners. That we need to forgive one another in the family. We have, uh, we have uh, admonishing those who are gone astray, correcting errors. <coughs> That's also a spiritual work of mercy. Uh, so when the parents are disciplining the children, so, na exercise natin to, and very patiently those who do us ill. No, it happens. Na iinis tayo sa asawa, na iinis tayo sa anak, o na iinis tayo sa magulang. Bearing them patiently, lalo na naman matanda na sila, and then praying for the living and the dead. And that we can exercise in the family, especially the dead relatives. Also, praying among us for each other. Hindi na natin masusubayin at masusubayin ang isa't isa. Ngunit mahalin natin ipagdasan ang isa't isa. At napakarami ka mag-anak na kailangan din ipagdasan. So by doing this, we are exercising works of mercy. We are promoting that. Na yan yung pinopromote na ating year of mercy na yun. So, my dear friends, you see how these three things are also connected to each other. Uh, the family, the Eucharist, and mercy. It is in the family that uh, the values of the Eucharist and mercy are being promoted. The Eucharist strengthens our family. And by exercising mercy in the family, the family is also brought together and closer to each other. So let us continue this reflection. No, but for your reflection throughout this Holy Week, sana gamitin nyo yung mga holidays ng Holy Week no, for prayer and reflection and not for vacation. 
uh, as people are uh, doing now. Uh, naging free day na, hindi na naging holiday. So, gamitin natin ito para mas mapalalim ang ating appreciation sa ating pananong kapatid. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, we are now opening the floor for your questions or related reflections that you might want to share. So before siguro questioning, we better say about two minutes lang of silence. So gathering together our thoughts. Ating na natin ang mga mahalaga para hindi mo bala. Okay, we can now open the door for questions. No questions? Anyone? Well, as Bishop mentioned, 2016 is the year of the Eucharist. You can also ask questions about some practices that we have during the Holy Week. I will see you in a Um, Bishop, this is not, uh, this is not about my family. You mentioned about uh, the family as a domestic church, and therefore, as a domestic church, there should be a priest. So the priest of the family, I assume, should be the head of the family. But what if, uh, I'm talking here as a general thing. What if the head of the family or the priest of the family does not order, not because he can, he intend to, but he does, he, he could not be a good model to the children and to the rest of the family? Um, because there are instances, um, people I know, yeah, children I know, that they said that they become like a juvenile delinquent or like a homosexual or something. It's because their father are not good model um, instead of the Christ of the domestic church. They are the one who are not um, strengthening and lightening their children. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, first, uh, it's not uh, correct to qualify that the priest in the domestic church is the father. No, kaya nga sabi natin domestic church, ano bang nangyayari sa simbahan? Ano sabi natin simbahan ito? Simbahan sa pagkat nagdadasal. Hintay ko yung may simbahan. Eh, yung sa ating parope, na hindi tayo nagdadasal. No, simbahan because uh, we are um, loving one another. Hindi tayo pwede maging simbahan na walang pakialam sa isa't isa. Oh, simbahan because nakikinig tayo ng salita ng Diyos. Ang salita ng Diyos ay pinapahayag. Hindi doon tinuturo, binabahagi sa atin. Simbahan sapagkat we serve one another. So, also in the family, the family becomes a domestic church because there is prayer. There is the Word of God. There is life, love in the family. There is service in the family. Now, ang leader niyan is uh, usually the father. Okay? Yan yung isang sa crisis natin ay sa crisis of fatherhood in the family. Nawawala yung presence ng father 
sa iba nawawala because uh, nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. Pero yung iba kahit na nandiyan, nawawala kaya sa wala pa lang sa bahay. O kaya nawawala dahil sa hindi niya na-assert no, itong leadership na kailangan no, sa, sa family. So yan yung isang problema. Kasi sabi natin, as priests, all of us baptized are priests. We share in the priesthood of Christ. That's why we can pray. That's why we can offer sacrifice. Because we are priests. No? So, pero nga sabi natin, that the Father has a special role, the role of leadership. As in the church, we cannot have a church without leadership. As shepherd, no? more than as priest, but as shepherd. Kahit nasa mga BEC natin, na wala tayong pare, pero may leadership sa BEC. No? So, kailangan yun. At yun yung problema natin sa maraming wala. Mahina yung fatherhood. Sana somebody can take over. The Lolo can take over. The elder son can take over. Even the mother can take over. Pero kung hindi, makakapalit siya siya. No? At totoo, maraming mga problema ay dahil sa kakulangan ng kanyang leadership ng father. Any more questions? Bishop, uh, regarding the Visita Iglesia, um, um, I was told that we could only, uh, if we visit the door of um, Mercy, so um, how many churches can we, uh, we were told that uh, we can only, we can, instead of seven churches, we can go to four churches if um, we go to a door of Mercy Church. Okay, um, uh, just clarify terms, no? Mayroon tayong Jubilee Churches na mayroong door of the Jubilee. No? And um, sa Arsaisis sa Manila, mayroon kami nilagay na lima. No? Na sa bawat city, may isa. Tulad ng Manila ay Cathedral, ang Pasay ay Alive Soros, yung Makati ay uh, Second Heart, sa Second Heart, Mandaluyong ay Divine Mercy, San Juan ay Santa Santo Cristo. Sa ibang diocese, may kanya-kanya din silang inilaga. Pero sinabi niya na sana lahat ng simbahan magkaroon ng door of mercy. Which would somehow tell people to be merciful. Ang iba ay choose the door of mercy of feeding the hungry. Ang isang simbahan ay, ay choose the door of mercy dedicated to uh, pray for the dead. No, paano yung corporal spirit of works of mercy? No, it's just as a reminder. Yung mga jubilee churches, when you visit them in the holy, in the uh, jubilee year, we can get plenary indulgence. Plenary indulgence, may apat ang condition. Tatlong condition ay uh, uh, common, yung isa yung patangitangin. Common, that you should uh, go to confession you can not receive a linear indulgence na nasa kasalanan ka. No. Pangalawa, communion. Regular communion. Pangatlo, prayer for the Holy Father. Prayer for the Church. During that particular activity. And fourth, is the particular activity to which an indulgence is attached. At ngayon nga, sa Jubilee year, isang activity is attached is to visit a Jubilee uh, Church. No, pwede yun ang iba na uh, indulgence in tax if you read the Bible for 30 minutes a day. Because so you get a plenary indulgence with the other three conditions. No, ibig sabihin ng indulgence, napatawad na sa kasalanan mo, tatanggalin yung mga bakas ng kasalanan. Kung gagawin natin ito, kung nangyari, nasugatan ka, magaling na yung sugat mo, may peklat pa. So may paalaala pa siya yung sugat mo. Eh, yung indulgence, sinatanggal yung peklat. No, hindi lang kasi, na, gumaling na yan, kasi nagpupisaw ka na, nagsisi ka na. So, may peklat pa siya. O tulad ng nasabi natin, na naglaro ka ng basketball, natapon mo yung ball ng malakas, nabasag yung uh, bintana. No, huwi ka ng pauwanhin. Sorry po, nabasag ko yung bintana. Pinatawad ka na rin. Okay, wala nang sama ng loob, nagpatawad ka. Pero paano yung pasabi mo tana? Kaya kung talaga nagsisisi ka, mabayaran mo yun. No, 
So, pero name, yun yung indulges. Tanggalin yung mga temporal damages to start by sin. No? So, kaya, yun may mente damage siya. Kaya, sa visita iglesia, pwede mo iludugtong dito. Ang mahalaga sa visita iglesia, hindi yung ilang sibahan at upulan. No? Ang mahalaga dito na ikaw ay pumunta ron in a spirit of pilgrimage. So, that means penance. No? Mahirap din ang lakad. O, so, sumakay man, papunta ron. No, pangalawa, in a spirit of prayer, no, nagdadasal ka sa simbahan yun. At pangatlo, in a spirit of reflection. Kaya di ba yung ginagawa nila, gumagawa ng daan ng cruise sa bawat simbahan. Or maybe for you, if you go to a, to a jubilee of mercy, door of mercy, you reflect on that particular act of mercy. Na sinasabisan ng door na yun. The reflection. So, kung makagawa ka ng dalawa lang, pero with this, nag-visita iglesia ka na. Kahit na gumawa ka ng sampo at uh, nagtumingin ka lang sa simbahan, turismo, hindi ka nag-visita iglesia. So, mahalaga yung diwa na ginagawa natin. And that can be done not only during Holy Thursday night. You can do that any time. No? Ngayong Holy Week. Additional questions? None? Alright. Um, 2016 is the year of the Eucharist and the family in the Philippine Church as mentioned by Bishop. And we would like to thank uh, Bishop Brother Pabilio for such an inspiring talk and for sharing with us his wisdom behind this double celebration in our Lunch and Learn series number 31. Thank you, Bishop. And we would also like to greet Bishop Pabilio a belated happy birthday. Can we all sing for Bishop Pabilio? save the date for our next Lunch and Learn series, which is April 14, 2016. The details and invitation will be sent out at a later date. And finally, it has been said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you for coming to this Lenten Reflection, and may we all have a blessed and meaningful Holy Week. Thank you. May isa kaming project which we started last year is called Balay Nilay. Balay Nilay. It's retreat for the poor. That we enable the leaders of the poor communities like BECs, like cooperatives, or like uh, um, urban poor groups, na ang mga leaders nila magkaroon din ang makakataon na magka-retreat. Uh, for their spiritual act building. Kasi maraming mga formation binibigay sa leader about organizing, about issues, no, about the dialoguing, pero wala masyado ka rin spirituality. So, we're organizing this uh, malay nilay retreat for them. Pero dahil sa sila ay mahirap, wala sila pang bayi ng retreat. Kaya hindi sila subsidize namin yung retreat nila. So, maybe you can help here, kasi ang sunod na malay nilay namin ay sa May 20 to 22 yata. No? So, about a two-day retreat no, for the poor, which will be done in Tagaytay. Uh, last year, we had already two batches. At maganda naman ang result. Nakatulong sa kanila. Uh, sabi nila, kailangan din namin ito. Kailangan din namin ng connected din sa Diyos para sa aming paghilo sa lipunan. Uh, so, if you can help, just spread the word. No? Uh, it could do a lot of good. Thank you very much.